The weather's getting better. The fish are waking up and I'm catching again. Come on. I think I've done it. Hello and welcome back to another video. This is part two of tracking down a 20 at the doorstep lake. As you can see, I'm not in the Merc today. I've actually now got a van. So you would have seen this before on the channel. If you haven't seen it, go and check a few videos ago. You'll see that I put my video of this van out. So I'm super happy with that, super buzzing. But I'm back at the doorstep lake. It is a very, very spring feeling um, at the moment. It's still sort of late, coming into late March. So we're not quite in spring. We're still technically winter, but yeah. It's very, very nice. The sun has been out today. The skies are blue and um, the wind is trickling nicely up into my, what I call my favourite swim. Now, it's interesting because a lot of 20s have been coming out up the other end, but I'm going against that because I'm going to fish in my favourite swim. Now, the reason for being that is where it has been a bit sunnier and a little bit warmer today, it's about 16, 17 degrees, which is really nice for this time of year. Um, I feel like the fish might be coming into the shallow water and also there's a very small breeze trickling up this way and there's three other anglers in the first three pegs up that end so I'm wondering with the pressure in there the wind trickling down and the warmer weather might have they might they have moved into the shallower water but anyway that's enough of that we're going to get into this session and hopefully you know the score guys you know the score we're after a 20 from this lake I've only got a couple of hours today like I say, it's the afternoon. I don't know if I did say that, but it is the afternoon. Um, so yeah, I've probably got four hours here. I'm just going to whip out a couple of solid bags and see if we can nick one. Right, well, I'm not going to show you too much footage of the lake because you guys have seen this all before. But yeah, I'm going to get some solid bags out to that far margin. And there has been an update on the rules. Um, you are now not allowed to walk around the back to bait up. So before I would go around there, throw some scoops of bait in or a handful of bait over the top of my spots. You're not allowed to do that anymore because people have gone around there and they've trashed um, some of the plants that they've that they've planted down here. So it's a shame, but listen, you've got to respect the rules. It is what it is. That's the update. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Like I say, solid bags out. And obviously I've got my spawn with me if I need to get bait out. I probably won't. I'll probably just go solid bags. I've also got my throwing stick and a small pack of boilies which I thought was over there, but it's not. It's actually, that is actually guilty. That's actually a KFC cup. I've been to KFC. So yeah, sorry about that. But yeah, <laughs> I mean, I mean, I only need to apologize to myself, don't I? It's not good. I'm not gonna lose any weight, keep eating bloody KFC all the time. Well, I am absolutely sweating my off. It is so warm and you know what? When I was setting up in that swim, um, I heard a fish crashed twice down this bottom corner and then another one crashed a bit further around so I was like I've got to move into this swim yeah so a solid bag's gone right on top of that and I'm going to get the right hand rod out probably to where I saw that second fish um, jump but that is interesting because the wind like I say the wind is blowing down this way it is a shallower end up this end I'm just wondering I am just wondering could they be up here just with that yellow gorsebury bushes there probably between half a rod length and a rod length just off it back towards us that's where it, it jumped twice and then another one come out towards that tree over there um, so I'm gonna lob one out over there well, I've just heard someone's alarm go off in the middle of the lake oh it looks like he's I don't know if you saw that there are you playing a fish there something just splashed but yeah if the fish are up at this end if there are some fish around here trust me we're having a fish today just had a single beep on the left hand rod. It's funny actually because I've just got my, my phone out to film. I've got a beep on the left hand rod. What I was going to say is if you have been following this journey of me trying to catch a 20 on here, you'll know there's another YouTuber, Dom um, from Haynes Outdoors. Go and check him out, Haynes Outdoors. We were having a race to, to catch a 20 from here. His ticket's now ended on here. I don't think he's renewing. So it's over to me. I've got to try and catch us 20 and yeah i'm just going to keep trying different tactics different methods of, of rigs and, and bait and stuff like that and eventually we will have one from this swim that i'm in now you're not allowed to fish past the island 
um, just for the simple reason that if you get taken around the back of the island, you're going to get snagged off or, or snagged up, sorry, and potentially snapped off. So it's just frustrating that I was going to be in my favourite swim and I was going to cast out to the spot where that fish has just jumped. But I decided to come here because there was fish jumping here. So I am adamant there is a lot of fish in from there, this side of the water. There is a lot of fish here. There's even bubbles coming up there. Just short of my right hand rod. When it is going to get a little bit warmer and a little bit sunnier, I cannot wait to get down here with a big bag of like dog biscuits or floaters and see if I can try and nick one or two off the top. That would be awesome. Um, that swim around the back of the island is perfect for that. But there are some bubbles coming up over my left hand rod. I've just seen another fish show right on the edge of this, where the tree is, on the edge of this island. They're all down here. Come on. I've got a catch. It's not going to be Willow Bank all over again, surely. But like I said, the fish are waking up. Right, well, it's just gone half past four and a quick update. I have actually moved swim into the swim that I was originally going to be in because I really thought I was going to get a bite down there and I didn't. And I don't know why, actually, I might know why, because look at this. Oh, come on, what's going on? But anyway, yeah, when I was over there fishing, like I did say, typical, that when I was setting up in the swim originally, I heard them boshing down there. And then when I was fishing down there, I heard them boshing at the back of the island. So one's gone out over that sort of area. And then uh, one's gone straight out to that yellow gorse bush over there. As I say, it's just gone about half past four now. So if I'm lucky, I'll get another couple of hours out of it. Um, because the days are starting to get lighter and soon the clocks will be changing going forward, I think it is. So instead of being like half four now, it'll be half five. Or it'll be half three. I don't know. Either way, the days are getting longer. Guess what, guess what, guess what? Right hand rod is in. I've got a common in the net. And it is one of the bigger ones I've had from here, but it's not a 20. Happy days, we're back catching on the doorstep lake. Solid bag with OG mini mix and a pink magic bean. And this one came with the monster crab flat spot. So I'm going to unhook, unhook it, get the rod back out, and then we're going to take a look at this fish. I will weigh it, although I think looking at it, it's probably going to be between, I think it's going to be a low double, but I will weigh it. But yes, we're back off the mark at the doorstep lake. The weather's getting better. The fish are waking up and I'm catching again. Come on. Right, well, here we go then. First fish of part two of tracking down a 20 from the doorstep lake. And unfortunately, this one's not the one, but it is a mid double, 14, 11 it went. And it's a nice looking common. And it's also very angry, but it's beautiful. If I can show you, <laughs> it's gonna beat me up. Look at that. Yeah, 1411, super happy with that. And that's a great start. Look at the tail on it, big old paddle. I tell you what, it didn't fight too well until it got under the tip. As soon as it got under the tip, it had me all over the show. But yeah, very happy with that. And uh, it's not quite the 20, but we'll take it. Come on. Right, well, it is nearly six o'clock now and look how bright it is. It's still like, okay. Do you know what I mean? It's decent. So yeah, um, I've got about, well, I want to be off by half six. It's nearly six now, so I'll probably give it another 25 minutes, half an hour. I did just get, um, I don't know if it was an aborted take or a heavy liner on the left hand rod. So when I reel that in, I'm definitely going to be checking that hook to make sure it's nice and sharp. Um, but that's another thing, guys, as well. Don't be lazy. Honestly, it can cost you a fish. It's not worth being lazy. Uh, when you buy hooks, they come in like packs of 10. So, you know, it is... For the sake of just going to the effort of changing your hook, um, it could be the difference between catching your PB and, and not hooking up. So make sure you always check your hooks. But like I say, yeah, I'm very happy that I had that one. I guess if you don't see any more from this session, you'll see the next time I'm on here, which hopefully the weather will be something similar. And um, hopefully we can go again. We keep on searching for this 20. Well, would you believe it? It is the very next day and I've been given a chance to get back down here pretty much exactly the same time as yesterday and fish it again. So I'm here for a few hours. 
Um, we're going to fish it exactly like we did yesterday in terms of we're here for a few hours, we're going to fish it into dark. But my approach is going to be slightly different and it's a lot busier today. So I'm just about to show you my swim, but I'm very happy with the swim because I don't think I've fished this one before. But there's nobody to my left or the next swim to my left. But there are two people around the island and there's two people in the first two swims. So that means there's no one to my right either, which means there's pressure in the water up by the islands and there's pressure in the water down by the car park. Now, I'm fishing slap bang in the middle and I know, like I said um, yesterday, that guy had three fish from this area of the lake. So I'm very happy um, with the swim that I've got. I've already seen a spot that I want to put a rod on. Um, but yeah, I will show you where I'm fishing and it's going to be a slightly different approach today. But just before I get that other approach set up and sorted, I am going to quickly whip out a solid bag because why not? It'd be rude not to, right? So here is the swim today. Like I say, I was up there yesterday, over there fishing across. There's the island. I was fishing down that corner and across here. But um, yeah, this, this time I've got a silver birch out in front of me and a big overhanging oak tree as well, which is all undercut along there. Can't give you too many secrets, guys. Can't give too many secrets away. But then again, I'm no expert. I've not had a 20 from here yet, so don't listen to everything I say. I don't um, tend to catch the bigger ones in here until today. And that rod has gone out absolutely spot on. I wasn't going to fish solid bags today. The idea was I was going to tie up some D-rigs, like some long D-rigs, like what I used to catch a horse. Um, yeah. But I just felt good with my spotting. Although, how annoying is it when you're spotting and your spawn doesn't open? Oh, it's so, it's infuriating because I had, all my spotting was spot on. Um, I just spread a little bit around that silver birch and then that solid bag has gone just to the right hand side of that, that silver birch. That's a bite, that's got to be a bite. Left hand rod is out towards that silver birch. Right hand rod is under this oak tree. Come on the carp. I think when I get the chance or the opportunity to come down here and fish here for a 24, um, or even just a full day session, I can come back a bit more sort of prepared with rigs and baiting approaches. But like I say, solid bag is just the easiest way to go. I'm here for a couple of hours. Just whip out solid bag you've got that bait around your hook it just it just is so easy isn't it let's be honest it's just easy a quick update i wasn't happy with that right hand rod under that tree it just wasn't i couldn't cast it exactly where i wanted to the branches are overhanging so i reeled it in and i didn't tie up a new pva bag what i did is i put on quite a long rig with a lead clip and a two ounce lead um and the boom is like a a coated braid it's quite long um, with a, a size eight hook on it, a smaller hook. And that's got one of the Parker Bates OG fish wafters on, which absolutely stink. But I managed to get down quite low down here and I've cast it and I've managed to get it underneath the overhanging tree. And I'll tell you what, it is dead in line with that oak and it is right on that, uh, on that bank and it's undercut there, so that both of those rods now have been cast into well i couldn't have gotten better either of them very happy with both and i'm very confident that both of them are placed in the right position i just hope because that right hand one's not also the bag i just hope that the rig is sat right i hit the clip so it should be but obviously there's going to be a lot of debris over there under that tree by the time you're seeing this video, I would have ran my five miles or my five laps of B1 for the British Heart Foundation and for Cancer Research UK at the Parker Bait Social at, uh, at Linear Fisheries. So this is, yeah, like I say, you would have seen that video. I hope I, I, hope I did it. <laughs> but yeah, I'm just basically, I mean, the swim's there, the rods are there. I'm pretty close to them. 
but I just want to try and get some steps in. Whether it's just walking, I might do a little bit of a jog up and down. I mean, there's no one in the swims either side of me, so I won't be bothering anyone. I just want to try and obviously not get fit because I'm I am overweight and I'm unfit, but getting these steps in, I'm hoping it's going to help when I do that run. So hopefully I've completed it. Hopefully I'm still alive. <laughs> but yeah, in all seriousness. Um, yeah, it's raising money for a good cause or two good causes. And that's what it's all about. So yeah, getting the steps in. And hopefully it'll make things a little bit easier when I'm running around B1. Very strange today. Yesterday, we had a bit more sun. It was a little bit warmer. There was a lot of movement on the lake. Today, I've barely seen a fish move. In fact, the only place I have seen a fish move is where I cast my right hand rod to, and that hasn't come off. Hmm. Maybe I should have put some foam over the hook. Do you ever worry, right, when you cast out, do you ever worry that where you've cast to, as much as you can feel a drop, do you ever worry that you're just, your hook and your bait's just buried in the silt? Even if you do use a long lead, a long rig. Mm. I've just lost one. It took me ages to get that cast right in that on that right hand rod under that oak tree, just on a single, no bait out there. That's the one with the leg clip set up, the coated braid, boom, and the OG fish wafter went tearing off. Obviously, picked it up straight away, kept it out from the um, the undercut bank, and. I got it halfway in. I was playing it for a minute and it came up to the top of the water. It rolled and the hook just pulled. I got everything back. Fish managed to get off the hook. And it's actually funny. I'm not going to I'm not going to say which hooks they were. But these aren't hooks that I usually use. Um <laughs> Tom Maker actually recommended these hooks in a post on, inst on, on Instagram and um, listen, it might not have been the hook. It might have just been a bad hook hold, but I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't think the fish was big. It wasn't a 20, but yeah, it's just annoying, isn't it? It just is annoying. Oh, well, Billy did the best he could do. Unfortunately, we didn't land a fish, so yeah. You know how I was saying I wasn't sure that it was sat properly or that it was buried in the silt and stuff? Well, clearly it wasn't. It worked, but yeah. No fish today. I must admit the first time I put it out there, before I had that run, it took me a couple of goes to get it out there, but that time I had to get down, down low and just zip it in under that tree. And I tell you, I hit it perfectly first time and that's gone again, perfectly where I want it, right in the undercut of that oak tree right there, right in that undercut. So yeah, very happy with that. I've kept the same hook on. Um, should I have? Well, if it goes again, I guess we'll find out, but yeah, I'll probably give it another hour or so, maybe hour and a half, but it is a bit chillier today. Um, but yeah, maybe I'll make a real start, slow pack down. I've got one in the onion bag. Everything is packed away. This is why I always say, leave the rods out till lastminute.com. Oh, it's just the rod, the net and Billy, and I've got one in the net. It's not that 20, don't worry guys. It's not that 20. You can breathe, okay? It's not the 20. I was holding my breath for the moment though because it came off that same rod, the right hand rod that I lost one on, under that tree. Ah. Oh. Come on. Well, here we go. Two sessions, two carp and two commons very similar size as well. I haven't weighed this one. I'm not going to, but it's very similar to the one I had yesterday. This one, oh, this one's very lively as well. Um, but the mouth on this one isn't too good, unfortunately. But there he is. Happy days, that's two commons and two trips. Uh, very similar size, I'd say two doubles. Like I said, I'm not gonna weigh it. It's definitely not a 20, but yeah, very, very happy. Parker baits again. 
come on the carp and come on the park of eights. Bosh. That was literally last knockins, last knockins. It's, it's funny because like this happened to me when I fished Westlake at Chichester. I wasn't packing away, but I was redoing the rods and I decided to pick up a certain rod before the other one. And because I picked that one up, the other one went off. So if I packed away that one first, I wouldn't have caught that fish. So it's just mental in it really how it's so important to make sure if I'd have reeled the rods in before I packed away the butt alarms, I wouldn't have caught it. So I always pack away the alarms first, obviously set the clutch really loose and have the rod pointing towards where you're fishing. It's just so that the fish won't pull your, pull your rod in. And um, as I'm packing away, I hear because obviously you're not gonna get the bite alarm because the bite alarm's packed away. So you hear the, hear the, hear the spool going around. And um, I was playing it and I was thinking, if this hook pulls again, <laughs> the whole pack are going in the bin, but it worked. It was on the rig, like I say, with the um, coated braid, which I don't usually use, but it was a coated braid, um, quite a long section with the OG uh, fish wafter. So, and, and funny enough, both of those bites I had today came on singles because the left hand rod that I was spotting bait over, um, that was also in a solid bag and that didn't go off. So yesterday I caught on a solid, solid, yesterday I caught on a solid bag with a pink magic bean. Today I caught on a single OG fish, um, which really does throw everything up in the air because I'm like, I don't know. I don't know now whether I need to fish solid bags or fish singles or fish fruit and nut or fish OG fish, but it's, it's, it's good. I'm smiling, I'm happy because not only did I not blank, I've had two nice commons in two short sessions. The fish are waking up, I'm catching fish. And already this episode has been better than part one. So let's hope. Next time I get down here, I can top it off with that 20, but I'm packing away. So yeah, I don't know when I'll be out next, hopefully next week. And um, we try again. Today is Friday the 29th of March and I wasn't gonna film today, but I thought I have to just in case something happens, you know. The whole point of the campaign is that we, we're down here trying to catch a 20 and I thought I had to come down here just because we, when I finish work now, it's still light outside. And the last two times I've been down here fishing after work, the bites have come as, we lo as we're losing light. So I'm gonna fish into dark. I am on what I call my favorite peg, um, right at the sort of shallower end of the lake. We've had sun all day today and the wind has been hacking down this way. So the island is just here. Um, I've just got both the rods out, but like I said, I wasn't gonna film anything. I've been so stressed and frustrated through work recently that I just had to come down, clear me head, and I'm just gonna fish into, into dark. So I'm gonna do a few hours down here, four or five hours, and see if we can uh, see if we can nick one or two. So that's the plan. I've got Billy with me as always. He's down there, but yeah. Oh, I don't know, I, I need to sit down and chill out and just, uh, yeah, a bit of a stress reliever, this one. Right, so in today's approach, so it's just gonna be um, a few hours down here, but in today's approach, I've got the left hand one out towards that spot over there. Right hand rod out is out towards this spot over here. Um, and I'm just fishing singles at the moment. Um, I had a bit of a nightmare with the spot rods. Um, when you get braid in a knot, it's pretty much game over. <laughs> and that's what happened. I have got some mesh with me, so I, what I should have done really was, was tie up some uh, mesh bags with pellet and boiling. Um, I've got my phone to the catch here. I might just whip some whip some boilies over there to each spot. But um, in fact, actually, why don't I do that? I'm going to do that now. <laughs> right, well, literally just as I stood up to get the throwing stick out, the left hand rod melted off one toner. And I've hooked one up. I've hooked up into one and I've got it in the net. So. Happy days. I'm going to get it out and show you. I think it's about four pound. Um, proper cricket back common, but I'll show you anyway. Let's have a look. Right, well, it's quite a lively one, but like I say, probably four or five pound, but it is a common. It's another fish from here. And I think that's probably the quickest I've ever had a bite from this lake. So he couldn't resist the park of eights. That was caught on the fish wafter over to what well, my left hand rod. So happy days. Let's get him back in. Well, because I've had a bit of an issue with my spot uh, rod and reel, well, reel, um, I think it's probably a wise idea to probably recast the rods just so that I know I can get them like perfectly on point before it gets too dark. Because when it gets too dark, I'm not going to be able to see where I'm casting. Um, like I say, because the spot reel is um, packed up, 
Um, I've not actually marked out wraps or anything. I know from fishing here, um, like a few times before, I know roughly my distances. However, I don't know why. It's weird because for me, even when I remember the same swim, the same place where I stand, the same cast, everything, <laughs> 12 and a half wraps seems to be different today than it is tomorrow. And then it is the next time and the next time. I don't know why. <laughs> It's, it's, it shouldn't be but obviously yeah you, i just want to make sure i'm nice and accurate and that's why like even though you know you can write down your phone if you stand at this point of this swim and cast out to this spot it's 12 and a half wraps you it's always worth just doing it every like i try not to remember that i try to disregard it and, and treat every session like a new session because i want to make sure that i don't trust what's happened before i want to treat it like a new session and make sure that on this session i get it right every time you know what i mean I don't know. People might disagree with that because it sounds like you should just remember your wraps and just cast there every time. But I don't know. I like to make sure that every time on each session, I just redo it. I know my spots. I'm fishing the same spots. But yeah, I just like to be precise every time. So it's just the way I do it. This is a better fish. Oh, yes, this could be the 20. This could be the 20. This could be the 20. This could be. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. It's a lump, it's a lump. I think I've done it. I think I've done it. I think I've done it. And I called it live take. I've done it. I've done it. I've done it. I've just sent a picture to Sean, the bailiff down here, and he reckons it's a fish called Dominoes, which means I've had two named fish this year now. Um, he said it usually goes about 23, 24 pounds. So, come on. Oh, we, he's going to come down. We're going to double check. It's in a sling at the moment. We're going to double check the weight and get some decent photos. And I'll show you guys. Oh, he reckons, unfortunately, he reckons this fish was tethered up last week. They cut a load of line and rigs out of it. Or well, not rigs, but a rig and load of line out of it. Um, but yeah, happy days. We finally, finally done it. Get in. Right, well, here we go. The moment I've been waiting for. This fish apparently is called Domino, apparently. Um, Sean said it was uh, 
put in here around Christmas time. So it's actually not one of the ones that was in here before some of these, these were stocked in. But yeah, 20, what did it go? 2310. 2310. There she is, and she's not been playing ball for the pictures, but it looks like she is now, so super, super happy with that. I knew as soon as I hooked it that it was uh, one of the bigger ones, and uh, yeah, like I say, that paddle on it, look at it, what a beautiful fish. And so happy with it. Let's get her back. Come on! It was the one to break the campaign on the doorstep lake. The 20 pound fish from the doorstep lake. And there she goes. <laughs> Come on! Well, the swim is an absolute mess right now. I've got bits everywhere, but both, both rods are in. I've done what I needed to do. I'm packing up. It's very dark now, but yeah. Oh, come on! At this point, I don't really know what to say. Um, obviously, I've sent a voice note to Dom, Haynes Outdoors. If you haven't seen him, go check him out. I'll leave it on the screen down below, but... Yeah, <laughs> yes, I've done it, I've done it. And actually, there's on this ticket, this is the 29th today, and it's a Friday, and on Monday, the ticket renews. So I've done it with like two or three days left of my ticket, so <sighs> I've finally done it, honestly. Um, now what? <laughs> this turned out to be the perfect catch because, <laughs> Oh, uh, I was so stressed and angry with work today that when I got off, I thought I'm going to go down the lake, couple of hours, clear my head, and I didn't think I was going to film it. I was like, I'm going to take some time for me just to actually fish a session where I don't need the cameras, there's no pressure on me or anything. I caught that one early doors and it was just a standard one that I've been catching all the time. And then to catch that one in what I class as my favourite swim on my favourite spot, on my favorite rig, which is actually a rig that I've not been using on here. It was caught on a Illusion D rig, which I don't use on here because of the silt. But I learned when I caught horse that you can just use a lighter lead and a longer boom section and it will sit, the wafter will sit because they're perfect. D rigs are perfect for wafters. And it's obviously worked and it was the same components and it was again if you saw me catch the horse in that video i used one of the hooks that calendar gave me which is one of the omc lock hooks same components again i've used those omc lock hooks twice and i've caught two 20s two named fish on, on both on on both occasions so big shout out to danny and sean as well for coming down i messaged them straight away or i messaged sean straight away and said mate i think i've done it i think i've caught the 20 and um, he came down and helped me with, with the photos and the camera work. And oh, I'm so happy they were there. But yeah, I don't know where this leaves me now. I've, it's task completed. It's funny because the, the transition from the way that I ended part one, where I was so down in the dumps about it all, to part two, which is a shorter episode. January, February was a struggle. March, bang, done it. So where does this leave me? Well, I will come back here and I will carry on fishing this lake. Obviously there's a lot more fish in here. There's more twenties in here to go at. There's a lot more fish in here that I want, but I will be moving on to Mopley Pond to try and catch some of the named fish in there. So I'm buzzing. I'm absolutely buzzing. Thank you. Honestly, thank you so much for watching these videos, not just this one and this campaign, but all of my videos. I really appreciate appreciate your support. If this doesn't deserve a thumbs up, then what are you doing? Get down there now and leave a thumbs up on this video. Subscribe if you want to see more campaigns, more sessions, more fishing, more content, and more ups and downs, I guess. What a roller coaster this campaign has been, but we've finally done it. I'm buzzing. £23.10, Domino's, and I think I need to treat myself to a Domino's. I guess it would be rude not to. But yeah, as I say, thanks for watching. Bish, bash, bosh.